and welcome to Know Your Representative, a fact-finding program designed to showcase the developmental and empowerment program lawmakers have implemented in their constituency. This is Zuru, the hometown of Senator Ibinala. He is the senator representing Kebi South Senatorial District. My name is Maria Olashendi. Join me as I take you through some of his developmental projects, empowerment and policies that he has put in place and his people are benefiting from. Do you know the constituency projects of your representatives? Well, today, we're going to beam our searchlight on the people of Kebi State and the lawmaker representing Kebi South Senatorial District, Senator Bala Ibn Na'ala. Senator Na'ala hails from the Wasugu ruling house and was born on the 22nd of July, 1962. A lawyer who caught his teeth in the profession as a legal advisor for the 32 Field Artillery Brigade of the Nigerian Army in 1986. He also served as a senior magistrate in the Sokoto State Judiciary in 1988. Senator Naala worked as a staff officer in Assets and Investigation Department of the National Drugs Law Enforcement Agency. He made his debut at the National Assembly as a two-term member of the House of Representatives from 2003 to 2011. He got elected into the Senate in 2015 as the lawmaker representing Kebi South constituency. From 2015 till date, the lawmaker has embarked on many laudable projects in health, education and the provision of solar panels for electricity. Now, in his second term in the Senate, the lawmaker shows no sign of slowing down. As far as Zuri Emirate is concerned, this is the first time in history we have a senator that is truly representing the people of Zuri. We have seen it. It's beyond rhetorics. Things are on ground for everybody to see. You may decide, or oh, maybe you have done it already. You can go and take the documentary, and that is why we even intend to um, award him for that. If you have a father, you cannot say that this is enough for you. In as much as we say thank you, we also ask for more. The people of Zuru, Danko, Wasagu, Yauri have been positively impacted by the provision of basic amenities. In a bid to boost healthcare delivery in this constituency, Senator Naala renovated some medical centers in Yauri and Zuru and also provided standard medical equipment to these facilities. These are modern beds, uh, one of its kind in a facility like this. They serve a dual purpose, especially for patients with cardiac failure or heart failure. We can to release the beds to support them so that they breathe well. And for patients with um, pedal edema, swelling of the limbs, you can actually release the, the limbs so that the swelling will also reduce. The bed is just okay with a, a, a side rest, both sides, to support the patient. Especially a patient that is having a challenge of uh, restlessness, so you can have a place to restrain the patient. To stay. He took it a notch higher by providing a boat ambulance for those in the River Rhine areas in Yauri and seven brand new ambulances in Kayan, Daji, Nachi, Garimbaka. Shanga to enable the people get faster access to medical attention. The senator is doing a lot in, in terms of uh, infrastructural development, uh, supply of equipment uh, to our facilities. And uh, with what he's doing, I can assure you that uh, an end in maternal mortality in KB State is in sight, especially Zulu Zone. We have a reduction in the rate of maternal mortality and child health. The senator is doing a lot and uh, we appreciate and uh, most of this equipment are uh, in place and we have access to, to them and um, uh, it will go a long way in uh, improving the health. Alhamdulillah, in our world, in Allah, 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 
muna godiya ga Allah muna godiya ga balana Allah ubangijin Allah ya kara miki albarka gaskiya godiya mu zuwa gare shi bai da iyaka domin irin matsalan da muke ciki da asibiti yayi mana nisa akwai matsaloli da yawa in an tashi sai mun isa zuru domin jinya amma domin alherin da shi mai girma senator bala ya kawo mana gaskiya muna da godiya sosai kuma muna da farin ciki musamman shiyoyin mata masu haihuwa gaskiya da akwai mace-mace mata sosai behind me is amina kura memorial hospital the hospital was provided by senator bala ibinala for the people of jarimbaka community this hospital serves as a memorial to amina kura who lost her life as a result of an accident that happened during the 2015 presidential election <laughs> Senator Naala has put up a health center for the people in Magoro and Nachi because it was becoming extremely difficult for them to have access to medical care. The senator believes that the provision of quality health care for people in the remote areas will not have been possible if constituency funds were not made available to execute these lofty projects. Welcome back. You're still watching Know Your Representative. My guest is Senator Bala Ibinala. He is a senator representing Kebi South Senatorial District. Thanks for joining us on Know Your Representative. Thank you very much. Recently, I visited your constituents and I discovered that there's a connect between you and your constituents. How did you achieve this? Well, you see, I have a perfect idea of what I came to do in the National Assembly. I equally had a very good understanding of what my people needed as at the time they took the decision to vote me into National Assembly. So if you blend these two, it means you have no option than to make yourself available for what is referred to as selfless service. And then once you render selfless service, then the appreciation is only natural uh, from the people you represent. While I was in Zuru and Yaori, I saw the things you did for your people, like the boat ambulance and twin seater buses and other things. Recently, I read where a lawmaker said he chooses to spend his constituency allowance the way he pleases. Why did you decide to spend yours the way you did for your people? I came from an area that has long been neglected. For whatever reason, we have the misfortune of being uh, like under the ladder and there were a lot of uh, agitations from the constituency which were not too good for, for the country as far as I'm concerned. And as a leader, your first priority is to try and see how you can assuage those feelings, how you can uh, uh, reduce those agitations uh, to meaningful uh, uh, dialogue so that your people can understand the fact that it was not a deliberate neglect, but that there was some form of deficit in the leadership uh, 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 issue. And then you are now here to provide that missing link. And that exactly informed why I felt whatever, whatever has been given to me, whatever I have struggled to get from the national uh, body to take to my constituency, either I have taken it uh, plus what I have added, or at least what has been given to them has been given to them. So that really informs the basis of 
my decision to spend whatever I have, including what I can raise, to ensure that those services that were badly needed by my people are at least provided for the purpose of uh, 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 the comfort of the, the constituents. What does it take to ground those constituencies? From Zuru to Yaori to Sakaba, what does it take to do that? It's commitment to service. Uh, leadership is about selfless service. And once you can render that, like I have told you, the respect comes naturally from the people who they know. They have never had it before like that. And therefore, now that they are beginning, in any case, the party under the platform under which I contested election, we promised change. So that's why I told you I was perfectly aware of what I was coming to do in the National Assembly. And I was in a very, very good position to appreciate the needs of my people and their expectations. So as a leader, what I did was to really address those expectations so that at least I can proudly look at them and say, I have brought change that I have promised to you under our party. And that's exactly what informed that. But I think most importantly, I have a covenant with my God. You, you understand as a leader, I, I, I took the Quran, I swore uh, by the Quran that I will uphold the constitution. And then the constitution itself provided the framework of governance. And what does it say? That the welfare of people shall be the primary responsibility of government. So that means I have an obligation to look at uh, uh, the welfare of my people and that informs uh, my decision to, to ensure that uh, those things are provided. I'm sure when you went to Yahudi and saw the boat ambulance, you will have appreciated what the people were going through before the provision of that boat ambulance to cross that river with a pregnant woman, you understand, or with somebody who is terribly sick and then it has to take him about two hours to cross when you can make provision for him to cross within a reasonable time of 25, 20 minutes to be able to be attended to medically. Recently, the president, President Mohamed Ibrahim, said there is little to show for the over 1 trillion naira budgeted for the National Assembly for constituency projects in the last 10 years. And you are part of the National Assembly for the past 10 years. Do you agree with this? No, it's not an issue of agreement with him. He is the president of the country. He has report coming from every nook and cranny of this country. But you have been to my constituency. Can you in all honesty say that there is little to show by way of constituency project? Can you in all honesty say so? Uh -huh. So there is a lot to show. So which means that when he talk, he is talking from the standpoint of the nation in general. But I'm sure if he were to speak on the, uh, on the issue of KB South, he will say there is much to show and people are aware that there is much to show and you have been there, you have seen that there is much to show by way of constituency project in that uh, constituency. You represented both Zuru and Yari. The people of Yari also want a university. Are they likely to get one? A university is, uh, is, is, is a is huge village. It's a university. Don't forget that that university is not meant for Sokoto or Kebi alone. It's meant for the Northwest. So it's only coincidental that it has to be situated in Zuru and of course not because I happen to come from Zuru but I have told you the history. As at 1971, we never had anything like politics. So if as at 1971, uh, 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 the wisdom of those who took agriculture seriously identified Zuru as a place to have that kind of facility, it means that that wisdom can only be built upon this government, uh, by this government for the purpose of that university. So the people of Yari should make do with the university in Zuru. It's closer to Yahudi than Ibn Zamfara. Mm. Uh -huh. And then Yahudi itself, you have been there, you have seen their potentialities as far as uh, fishing is concerned. You have seen the international fish market that I happened to uh, uh, complete for them and then put modern equipment there and you have seen they have put it to use. So the country stands to gain a lot. For example, agriculture includes uh, fishery. If the wisdom of those who are going to establish this university extend to the issue of establishing a mini campus for the purpose of promoting fishery.
Welcome back. You're still watching Know Your Representative. Okay, now, Distinguished, tell us what informed the bill you sponsored on the Federal University of Agriculture. Well, you see, you have been to Zulu again. You've driven from Zulu up to Sakaba, up to Wasagu and the rest. You know that it's truly an agrarian society. And I'm sure you have had the privilege of passing by what is, to, what, what is known sorry, as College of Agriculture, Zulu. That college was established in 1971 on the recommendation of the Faculty of Agriculture at Amadou Bello University's area. In recognition, listen to this, in recognition of the contribution of Zulu people as far as agriculture is concerned. So there is, a, we have huge potentialities derivable from agricultural investment in Zulu. And in any case, we had a president who said he wanted to promote uh, uh, agriculture. And then we had another president before him who said that because of the importance that federal government attaches to agriculture, federal university of agriculture should be established in each geopolitical zone of the country. Zulu form part, part, part of Northwest. And if this decision can be taken in 1971 to, 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 to identify Zulu as a, a veritable place where this uh, College of Agriculture can be cited, it behoves you to say that it again makes it the most preferable place to cite the Federal University of Agriculture. Happily enough, the President has been uh, magnanimous enough to understand the fact that uh, uh, that will bring a lot of uh, 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 goodies to the people and then to the, to the country in general and he has signed the bill and we are working day and night to ensure that the uh, university is fully uh, uh, on ground by September 2020 and I'm sure, I have no doubt in my mind that this country will be too happy to have that kind of university in that place because of what is going to come out after the, uh, the university takes off in Zulu. Recently, your colleagues were calling for the sack of the service chiefs, asking the president to sack them or he resigns. What's your take about this? First, I am bound by the decision of the two houses, being a member of the National Assembly. But my personal opinion of that, I'm entitled to under the Constitution. The issue of insecurity in this country has nothing to do with service chiefs. And it will have been appropriate if you were able to positively point to the inefficiency or if ineffectiveness of the service chief in controlling this matter, then you can blame them for it. The second question to ask is that the president being the commander-in-chief, they being loyal members in the armed forces to the commander-in-chief, whether any one of them can just walk to the president and say, I have resigned my appointment. And if he does so, what reason is he going to give? So they are employed at the pleasure of Mr. President. And as long as Mr. President is satisfied that what they are doing is the right thing, I think it will be erroneous to sit down and believe that by the mere experience of sending them away, the insecurity issue will be solved. Now, the, the, the question to ask is, in what way can you hold the service chief responsible for the insecurity. In what way? Let me tell you what is happening in this country, that everybody is involving in self-denial in, in one way or the other. The various injustices that we planted in the, past, in the past have started manifesting themselves in the various sectors of our society. And the manifestation will be different from geopolitical zone to another. What we have is banditry and then much of kidnapping. Now, our policies that is directed to the position the country may work in one way to promote that. But the most important thing is that the overall interest of the country is what, what is being taken into account in making sure that those policies are put in place to ensure a secure future for the country. So no matter how you look at it, you cannot take a decision that will be 100% insulated from consequences. So the natural and probable consequence of certain actions of government will only help in maturing what has already been there, you know, over the years. There is a chain of command in all the armed forces uh, that we have that, that never put a cap to ideas, you understand? Except if they are saying that, well, 
the, 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 the service chiefs are the ones that will give the ideas on how to confront this insecurity issue uh, 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 single-handedly, which I don't believe is, is, is true. My ordinary understanding of security issues is that the nature and character of a crime to a larger extent will dictate the control strategies to be in, uh, uh, employed for the purpose of solving that, uh, that, that crime. Finally, before we let you go, the people of Zuru, Iari, Wasago, Danko are grateful for what you've done. But just like Oliver Twist, we always want more. What more can you do for your people? Like I told you, I'm more than happy to do more and I will continue to do more for my people. On behalf of management, our profound gratitude and thanks for what you have been able to do for us uh, in giving us the, a new hospital ambulance, which has um, augmented the one we already had that has broken down. Mungode Mumaigida Senator Banana Allah, this is Ayukanda Yeimuna. Muna Matuka Gudia, Kao Muna. Polowaya, Tauta the Transformer. Munganta wa nanzahi liko wa yagani wande yake mutu koye na yeya rabalana Allah. Ede ye biyo ye ga hanyye gege so polowaya gada akata uku. So ya sanda che wa lele gomne tita sanda mo. Aiki ndeye muna ne azama ni ndeye na PD. So da Allah ya kawo shi kuma muliki APC. Kuma muka taka rawa gani ye jila baalim aiki nda muke imishi. Allah ya kandari ya tako da kanshi da shida megira alhaji garba dan jarida. Senator Ibn Nala, we thank you so much for what you did here in this hospital, General Hospital, Riba, than for Wasabu local government in Kebi State. He really tried for this community. Even the community around this place, like Bedeko, uh, Rumtsua, they really appreciate the effort of Senator in the community. Uh, since the establishment of this uh, center, uh, the women, the pregnant women coming for checkup, in fact the population is what more than more than 50 to uh, 70 people that are coming here to uh, take their checkup for pregnancy. You could remember it was Bala ibn Allah who initiated and passed a bill on the establishment of University of Agriculture, Zuru. He initiated it and uh, I think it, it has been accented. So by the grace of God, we are going to have a University of Agriculture in Zuru where not only Zuru indigents not even KB state indigents, but also neighboring states like Sokoto, Zamfara, Niger, and so on, as our catchment areas will benefit. Thanks for watching. I am Maria Olashendi. Bye for now.